Coming up on a special edition of UB Football Insider, spring football is underway. We'll get the latest from Coach Lance Leipold and break down some of the key players heading into this season. You'll meet the new strength and conditioning coach who has the Bulls bulking up and starving at the same time. And thanks to the Bulls' newest position coach, the defensive line should be strong as a rock. It is UB Football Insider, and we kick it off right now. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the UB Football Insider Show. It may be April, but it is football season, spring practice in full gear, heading towards the spring football game on April 13th here at UB Stadium with Bulls head coach Lance Leipold. we got a lot to talk about, uh, a lot of good stuff going on with your program, the way the season ended, uh, the anticipation level for this year. So give us a sense of through the first couple of weeks here of spring practice, what you've seen from your guys and what you're feeling about your team. Well, we're very excited, Paul, where we're at right now, and I, I think uh, much like the way we ended the season, we hit the, we hit the field feeling that, that same type of confidence. But it still has to go back to fundamentals, starting at square one, getting our new players acclimated. But you can see the retention level, the confidence, and the experience that we've been able to have and make that uh, work to our benefit. Because you have so many experienced players coming back, is this a different kind of spring practice that may be less about trying to teach new players what to do as opposed to teaching the returning players how to do it better? I think so. I, I think it's still a mixture. But I, I think the experience at some of the positions, probably our skill positions offensively, it, it's a it's a probably a, a point now where we can continue to build. But at the same time, we have a, like a group of young redshirt freshmen now, wide receivers that really have to come along to to increase that depth at that position. But it's nice to be able to take some of those starters, maybe not use them as much in some of the live scrimmage situations to help speed up some of that youth. You also have more players than you are you normally used to. And I know you've brought that up a few times about how important that is. Explain that for everybody, why you have more players and how that will help you. Well, we had eight uh, mid-year enrollees for various reasons. Four were gray shirt, one was a prep school player and a couple junior college players, Paul. But what, what really is is nice is our I think our retention and our health within our program now as we go through our fourth spring is many times across the country, you, you'll read about, you know, Power Five conferences, SEC schools I've read in the past, Big Ten schools, seven offensive linemen going through the spring. Well, that's hard to, to get a, a lot of plays run. That's hard to scrimmage. And really, your, your, your amount of work really has to be limited, and you really have to get creative in practice. We have about 14, I think, offensive linemen practicing healthy right now, uh, you know, and almost 95 players that are going through practice. So, again, our, our, our reps, our repetitions, and for, for everybody is, is staying at a high pace, much like we do in August. We've seen it so many times at so many different levels of football, Lance, that when a team ends a season strong and starts to believe and starts to see the results of all their hard work, it almost always rolls into very positive things the following season. Your team wins its last three games, really clicks, particularly offensively, and you've already talked about the momentum. That's the key word here. How much does that help? How much does it make a difference? And how much can it sort of already set the tone for what 2018 will be well it's not only just in spring practice Paul it, it's really when we came back second semester and how they approach winter conditioning the weight room everything was yeah very disappointed um, kind of a bitter pill to swallow as far as being left out of, out of a bowl game after re reaching that bowl eligibility but again a, as a point of momentum motivation and confidence to take the next step you have eight returning players coming back on offense you have six returning players coming back on defense again uh it, a little unusual that you have as many high-level players that are still returning. Do they lead the way here a little bit for both of those squads? Do, do, do the, the the newcomers that have to fit into those spots already kind of know what they need to live up to? Well, I think they do. And I, again, I think everyone's more comfortable now as we keep moving along. But if you take, you know, defensively, a Khalil Hodge in the middle, a Cam Lewis in the secondary, Justin Brandon, Chuck Harris in the defensive front, a lot of guys that have been with us now, played a lot of football, and at each level of that defense we have experience whether it be James O'Hagan, Tyler Mabry, KJ Osborne, Anthony Johnson at receiver and of course 
Tyree Jackson, Drew Anderson at quarterback, we have experience in every group now. And it's not like one group's waiting and looking over to, for somebody else to lead them. We have that within each position group, and that's really great to see. First chance for Bulls fans to get a look at all of that good stuff will come up on Friday, April 13th. It's the annual Blue-White Spring Game here at UB Stadium. Going to be a great opportunity for the guys to put on a little bit of show and for the fans to really start to get excited. You just rattle off a lot of important names. Matter of fact, four Four of the five All-Mac performers are returning for 2018. Coach and I will talk a little more in specifics about them when we return on the UB Football Insider Show. Ambition, purpose. Here, it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Seth Q, changing lives every day. On Friday, April 13th, here at Alumni Arena, it's one more chance to celebrate the amazing NCAA tournament winning men's and women's basketball teams. A special pep rally will be held inside the arena. It starts at 5.30 right before the football spring game at UB Stadium. Welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show. In the last segment, Coach, you rattled off a lot of the key names of guys that are going to be important players for the Bulls this year. Of the five players that were all MAC performers a year ago, four of them are returning. Let's start on offense and let's start at the quarterback position. Tyree Jackson uh, was not one of those all MAC players, but obviously we know how important he is. And even though he missed four starts, still threw for over 2,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, just three interceptions. But the numbers that really jump out about Tyree were those last four games when he came back off the injury, averaged over 340 yards passing and threw nine touchdowns. What did you see in that final stretch of games for Tyree that is going to roll into this season? I think the confidence, as we've been talking about earlier, just with everyone, but I think it's really happened uh, to kind of click for him. And I and, and sometimes injury can, you know, as disappointing and frustrating as they can be, it can be a benefit. And I think after playing some and then having a chance to watch Drew take over for a little bit and then not be in such a hurry to leave the pocket his pocket presence got really uh was really improved and his confidence to make some of those throws and still make great decisions really tried to help you know elevate his game as a passer some quarterbacks are athletes some are throwers some are passers mm. i think in those four games we saw a little bit of the evolution of tyree mm. becoming more of a passer who understands what's going on around him and i think we've seen a little bit of that even at spring practice that and that's that's a big important step for a quarterback, isn't it? Yeah, and and it, I know it's a big credit to Tyree and of course Jim Zabrowski, uh, his position coach, and and really I, I think it still goes with the maturation of a quarterback and and the time that he has played the position and feeling comfortable in what we're doing, and it's all really starting to come together with him. And you can see him now making throws with great confidence and understanding and understanding what defenses are doing. And uh, you know I know he's very excited for the fall. And as long as he throws it up anywhere near number eighty. Three good <laughs> things usually happen. Again, Anthony Johnson, number two in the country in receiving yards with over 1,300 yards receiving and a school record 14 touchdowns. What's the next step for uh, for the guy you call AJ? Well, you know, Anthony had, as you say, just an outstanding season. And, you know, it started from the, that first Thursday night in Minnesota where, where I think he just kind of burst on the scene and made some plays, you know, right away against Big Ten competition and, and never looked back. Uh, he continues to work hard. I think he's put on so, some extra weight and muscle. And he, and he continues to to go out every day and try to perfect his game. Now, now he's not going to be the unknown. And, and now a lot of people are going to find ways to try to slow him down, and that's going to be a challenge for him each and every day, and I think he understands that. One of your, another one of your all-MAC returners on offense is the guy who starts every play. That's your center, James O'Hagan, now heading towards being a four-year starter. What's the progression for James? Well, right now, you know, James continues. You know, again, he's a guy that's around the office probably more than any other player player in our program that he goes in the offensive line room he even calls that his own office I think because <laughs> he he kind of puts himself at the computer 
camera and watches film and gets a lot of work done. I think if you go back, as you know, Paul, if you look, he's probably played 99.5%. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a generous half a percent Since there. he's a redshirt freshman. He, yeah, he has played so many snaps. So really this this spring he takes a lot of, you know, I, I say our, our weekday reps, but uh, you know we really limited him in what we've done in the scrimmage situations because he is battle-tested and we want to continue to build depth there. All right, on the other side of the ball on defense, one of those all-MAC guys is Khalil Hodge. 154 tackles were second in the country last year. But I thought that the thing that Khalil did better was make other plays along with tackles, force fumbles, interceptions. Again, is that what you're looking for him to do this year? Absolutely, and continue to be the leader that he is. You know, he, he makes a play that uh, really kind of, you know, assures the win against against Ohio to, to end the season. And what, what a great win that was for us, a great play by him. But, uh, again, a guy who's played a lot of plays for us there and he continues to to lead the defense be in more command of what what's going on around him and, and make everyone else around him even better and uh his job got a lot easier when the defensive line started to play well as the season went on and nobody had a better ending stretch of games than chuck harris he became a real playmaker and a real demon for defense for offenses to handle and again another all mac guy returning uh you've talked a lot about him being a very young player without a yeah. lot of football mileage is the light on there it is and, and again another guy that with, with experience uh, strength size all the things you, you watch a young man continue to mature and, and the confidence grow and now that the NCAA has allowed us Paul to go to 10 assistant coaches we've been able to to add Rock Bellantoni uh, as as our fifth defensive assistant and Rock will will coordinate our special teams but also be the defensive end coach so now instead of having four positions you know uh, of the defensive line in one meeting room we're able to split that off and you know and go two and two and there's a lot more attention to detail a lot more coaching and I think that's really going to help uh, our whole defensive line, especially our defensive ends. Examples of exactly what Rock Bell and Tony can do coming up later in the show as we have him mic'd up for one of the oh. spring practices. So all of those players are a big reason why there is so much excitement around this program. And again, your first chance to see it all comes up on Friday, April 13th at the annual Blue White Scrimmage. We'll talk a little more about the offenses and the defenses and some new players when we get together next week. Sounds great, Paul. Coming up, the Bulls have a new strength and conditioning coach, and he's got them starving to reach new heights this season. UB Football Insider returns right after this. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Welcome back to the UB Football Insider. We want to introduce you to a very key member, a new member of the Bulls coaching staff. He is Lou Carella. He is the new strength and conditioning coach. And while everybody sometimes focuses on the coordinators and the position coaches, I think you know, and I think football people know, that the strength and conditioning coach may be one of the most important guys on a coaching staff, right? I, I'm pumping you up here, aren't I? You are, but it's uh, it's a great time, and I uh, get to I love working with the kids. So, and and one of the reasons why Lou is you probably spend as much, if not more, time with the players, even than the position coaches. You were there all through the month of January. You'll be there all through the summer when the NCAA requires that the coaches are not involved. So I would think, as a strength and conditioning coach, you have a different level of relationship with the players. How much do you enjoy that? That's the best part. That's the only reason I really do this job is because of the relationships you make with the kids. It's, it's so much fun getting to know the backgrounds on them, and that's why I interview all of them one-on-one -on -one before I even try to get started with them so I can really try to pull uh, what they want in their goal out of them. So you've had an interesting uh, uh, couple of other steps. You were at the University of Michigan for a while, North Texas. You're coming here from Louisiana Lafayette. What appealed to you about Buffalo? Why did you want to be a part of Coach Leipold's staff? Well, it was the interview. I, I interviewed with the whole staff and it was a unique interview because I've never interviewed with an entire football staff at once before. But you could just see it. I mean, with the, the way they the way they were looking for a strength coach, I thought it was very uh, professional and just their their vision, the vision that they have. The coach Leipold, I mean, he's a uh, he's awesome to work for. And I could tell that on the interview. And I knew this team was close to doing something really great. And I wanted to be a part of that. How, uh, knowing that this team, what this team did last year, knowing how close they are this year, how does that change the way you approach your job? 
Uh, not very much. I just I'm very passionate about what I do, just because I I know uh, I have to challenge these kids, regardless, and that's my mission to challenge them, make them come together, and believe in each other. So when we take the gate on August, it's uh, there's no there's no blinking. It's it's we know each other, we love each other, and, and let's go. One of the ways you have challenged this team, uh, I think to us here in Buffalo, has seemed rather a unique way to go about some of the off-season conditionings. You have established teams amongst the teams, right? Tell us a little bit about that approach. Why does it work, and how do you are you able to help the team within the team push the other teams? So there's eight teams within our team, and those captains got to draft their own teams. The captains were picked by the coaches, who were the best guys leader-wise on our team that deserved it. And then we had a draft. So we had all their academic points, all their discipline points, all their, uh, you know, if they miss class, if they're late to class, all that stuff in front of them when they draft so they can look at their draft board on who they really want to. Because the thing I love about it is there's things that take talent that they're going to need for those draft picks, but there's also three categories that take zero talent. And they got to be really smart with who they draft because that's going to hurt them a lot more than just the talent side of things. Yeah, they might be fast. Yeah, they might be uh, strong and explosive. But do they make their weight? Do they keep their locker clean? Do they go to class? Are they ever late? It all adds up and it hurts or helps. So. And, uh, and then, you know, as you've evolved through that now into spring practice, that continues. Um, I, we noticed you at practice last week giving out some awards to the guys, T-shirts that had the word starving on them. Take us through what that means to you and what you're trying to get that to mean to the guys on this team. Well, on day one, I announced that we're going to do a thing called the hunger board. And there's three categories of hunger. They're satisfied, there's hungry, and then they're starving. I think a lot of teams in this league are hungry. I don't think very many are starving because those are the ones that separate themselves at the end. When we're in the midseason MAC play, the starving guys are going to stand out, not just the hungry. Hungry, I feel like, can get you to average. Hungry, can you can blend in. Starving, you'll, you'll stand out and maybe have the best season ever. So every week, we graded kids just on effort. Were they starving, were they hungry, or were they satisfied? And different kids fell in different categories every week so you had to make it two out of four weeks and starving to get a T-shirt. And there was 40 of them. It was the most I've ever seen That's anywhere. Great. That's so, a very encouraging sign, isn't it? It is. And it's, it's been a pleasure to coach them, too, because it helps so much being new. And their attitudes has just been incredible. It's been awesome. He's a key member of the Bulls coaching staff. Even as spring practice will wrap up here, your work not does not stop. You'll be the busy guy during the summer workouts to get everybody ready for the start of training camp in August. Lou, welcome to Buffalo. Keep up the good work. We'll look forward to catching in and finding out uh, who else is dishing out, who else is getting those T-shirts as we move through the year. Thank you very much. Glad Thank to be you. here. You got it. Thanks, Lou. Coming up, we're mic'd up with new defensive ends coach Rock Bell and Tony. UB Football Insider will be right back. For nearly 100 years, ECMC has brought hope and healing to Western New York. I'm living proof, and I couldn't be more grateful. Like cancer, we all hope trauma will never happen to us. But when it does, we can rely on ECMC to always be there. I hope you join me to be there for them and help them build their new state-of-the-art trauma center and emergency department. Visit supportecmctrauma.org to help learn how you can support life-saving care. This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. On Friday, April 13th, here at Alumni Arena, it's one more chance to celebrate the amazing NCAA tournament winning men's and women's basketball teams. A special pep rally will be held inside the arena. It starts at 5.30 right before the football spring game at UB Stadium. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. The Bulls were able to add a new position coach this year. Veteran Rock Bellantoni will be in charge of the defensive ends and special teams. And his experience in the sport of football is already paying off. Hustle, hustle now, guys. Running out of time. Running out of time. Hustle down. Out, in, smother. Top gun him. Good. 
slingshot. There you go. Nice job, Miles. And you're playing all the run blocks great. You're uh, shedding blocks good. You just got to get out of that lockout habit, right? You'll be all right. We got some, we got some hand drills in there today. Some square bags. Give him a good two-point stance, please. Set. Good. There we go. Tighter hands. We just did the drill. Carried over. Who's up? Let's go. Set. Hit. Good. Replace that down hand. Set. Hit. Sit. Set. Hit. Strike. Rip. Come on. Be quick. Be quick, friendy. Good job. Good rip. Other way. You're actually coaching today with the mic out. I coach every day. <laughs> I coach every day. Violent club. You got to want to get it out more than he wants to hold it, guys. Club it out, Joey. Get it now, Joey. Club it. Scoop it. Scoop it. Scoop it. Scoop it. Come on. Scoop it. Come on, if that's an in and out burger, I know you'd be scooping it up, right? Club it, Juan Keith. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Scoop it. Scoop it. Scoop it. That's it. That's it. How much time we got? 250. Oh, perfect. Good. Set. Hit. Strike. Ah, oh, Eric. Eric. You got a nice loose shade, right? He's coming. You see his hat coming out. Reach, right? Step with that outside foot, outside collision, right? You did this. You got your front foot up, you step back, cross over. Do it again. Just Eric. Say. Hit. Press, press, press. Good. That's it. Come back. Ready. Say. Hit. Hip in the hole. Hip in the hole. Rip. Good. Okay. Now where's the ball going if that happens? It's going over there, right? So instead of ripping up the field, go flat down the line. Block forever. Time equals yards. Time equals yards. Chuck. Okay, so if you're blocking me, right, you're blocking me, okay, and the returner is going that way, right? So you're blocking me. Right. You don't have to scrape paint until now. When you start to lose me, that's when you want to scrape paint, right? If you can stay engaged with me, just time. stay, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You scrape paint when, when you're out. When you would have to grab me, like you're, you're covering and I'm blocking you, if I had to grab you to hold you, I don't want to do that, right? right? I don't want to block you in the back. That's when you want to scrape paint. You just try to get your body between you and the returner. Okay. Special day coming up this Friday here at UB. 5.30 here in Alumni Arena, the pep rally for the men's and women's basketball teams, and then right across the street for the 7 p.m. kickoff of your first chance to see the 2018 football Bulls in the annual spring game. We'll see you here and there, and then we'll see you on Saturday for UB Football Insider.